On this uh, short selling ban, there's analysts. I mean, I just read an analyst note today where he's totally flipping out, talking about how short sellers are driving these banks to zero, and we have yeah. to intervene and slap a ban on this again. What would your right. response yeah. be to that uh, idea? Um, yeah, th we did do a more short selling moratorium. Uh, there, there was the same kind of a problem during the Great Financial Crisis. I do think a lot of this is being driven by short sellers who again are capitalizing on kind of, I think some of the exaggerated characterizations of what's going on. So, uh, you know, that's the SEC's call, but it's important for people, depositors to understand what a bank's share price is, has nothing to do with whether a bank regulator considers it insolvent and thus needs to be closed. A bank capital determination is based on, on your book equity, basically at a high level, whether your assets exceed your liabilities and <laughs> these banks are, you know, that's okay. Uh, based on the current accounting rules, uh, there, you know, it's not apparent that there's an issue. So don't don't worry when you see a share price tank like that. A lot of it, I think, is being driven by short selling. It doesn't. It may or may not say that the bank is weak, but it doesn't have anything to do with the regulated, regulatory determination of whether a bank is insolvent and needs to be closed. I think the unsettling thing is that so many of the the candidates who have been the hardest hit then go on to be the ones that are, are failed. I mean, the precedent here is troubling. Yeah. And the, one other question yeah, on that, is. you know, who's going to rescue banks that need additional funding, capital yeah. purchases? Right. We've already played the J.P. Morgan card. They needed a deposit waiver just to do that. Are there right. enough other big or super regional banks out there who would be able to acquire weaker players? Yeah. And what does it well, mean for the FDIC is, fund? Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, this could be, especially if they keep trying to find ways to protect uninsured without, you know, this is why I think you need targeted protection for transaction accounts. The other uninsured uh, should be subject to the caps. So um, it, it's a good question. Uh, but I will tell you, it looks to me like there's a lot of bargains out there for some open bank acquisitions. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to get the FDIC involved. That's probably easier. Uh, than to try to wait for the government to step in. And I don't know that the government will step in. Uh, again, a lot of this is being driven by fear uh, and not basic fundamentals about how healthy these banks are. Quick final word, Sheila. Would raising the deposit cap even matter at this point? Because I wonder if the concern has migrated from uninsured depositors and, and, and sort of flighty money to actually just concerns about credit weakness. Going, right. We're going into recession, obviously, just a yeah. question of timing at this yeah. point. So you could raise the cap on transactions. I'm not even sure that would make a difference in this phase of the crisis. What do you think? Well, I, I think it's a good point. There, there is a, a larger looming issue of recession and monetary policy and, and the continued kind of ratcheting up of, of interest rates. And this, this really has nothing to do with whether, uh, you know, banks have taken, made bad loans or bad investments. With this a steeply inverted yield curve, look, a bank business model is borrowing short and lending long. <laughs> if your short-term cost of borrowing are going to exceed your, your returns in, in, in lending longer, investing longer, you've got a problem with that model. And part of the problem, the way the Fed has been tightening is that they're really focusing almost exclusively on short-term rates. They haven't done much in the way of selling their portfolio, which would impact longer-term rates. Mm -hmm. And then they're raising short-term rates basically by paying banks and other financial intermediaries not to lend. You can park your bank at the Fed, get a nice juicy return. It's going to go up to over 5% now. So that really, this, this yield curve inversion and how the Fed is raising short-term rates and focusing almost exclusively on short-term rates is a much bigger concern I have than whether banks have been particularly mismanaged or underregulated or not.